Ganilo or Ganilon, Florida, 11th century, was a Benedictine monk of Marmoutier Abbey in Tours, France. He is best known for his contemporary criticism of the ontological argument for the existence of God which appeared in Saint Anselm's Proslogion. In his work in behalf of the fool, Ganilo contends that Saint Anselm's ontological argument fails because logic of the same kind would force one to conclude many things exist which certainly do not. An empiricist, Ganilo thought that the human intellect is only able to comprehend information provided by the senses, little beyond this essay is known of Ganilo, no other extant writings bear his name. Anselm wrote a reply to it, essentially arguing that Ganilo had missed his point. Topic the Lost Island refutation Anselm claimed his ontological argument as proof of the existence of God, whom he described as that being for which no greater can be conceived. A god that does not exist cannot be that than which no greater can be conceived, as existence would make it greater. Thus, according to Saint Anselm, the concept of God necessarily entails his existence. He denies Ganilo a godless epistemology. Ganilo criticized Anselm's argument by employing the same reasoning, via reductio ad absurdum, to prove the existence of the mythical lost island, the greatest or most perfect island. If the island of which we are thinking does not exist, it cannot be the greatest island, for, to be the greatest island, it would have to exist, as any existent island would be greater than an imaginary one. This, of course, is merely a direct application of Anselm's own premise that existence is a perfection. Since we can conceive of this greatest or most perfect island, it must, by Anselm's way of thinking, exist. While this argument is absurd, Ganilo claims that it is no more so than Anselm's. Anselm had no difficulty in rejecting this parody, because Ganilo had described the lost island as an island more excellent than any other lands. Anselm correctly pointed out that nowhere had he had put forward the kind of argument which Ganilo alleged, because the phrase greater than everything does not have the same force for the purpose of proving that what is spoken of is in reality as his own phrase than which a greater cannot be conceived. Anselm was right about that. Because Ganilo's phrase did not contain the words can be conceived, his counter-argument cannot generate the contradiction from which Anselm concludes that something than which a greater cannot be conceived is in reality. Philosophers often attempt to prove the ontological argument wrong by amending Ganilo's phrase to make it comparable with Anselm's. They interpret Anselm as arguing as follows, God is that being than which no greater can be conceived. It is greater to exist in reality than merely as an idea. If God does not exist, we can conceive of an even greater being, that is one that does exist. Therefore, God must indeed exist in reality. Ganilo's parody, once amended, runs along the same lines The lost island is that island than which no greater can be conceived. It is greater to exist in reality than merely as an idea. If the lost island does not exist, one can conceive of an even greater island, that is one that does exist. Therefore, the lost island exists in reality. If one of these arguments is sound, it has been asserted, they must both be sound. By Ganilo's reckoning, however, one and, therefore, the other, two, is unsound. The lost island does not exist, so there is something wrong with the logic that proves that it does. Because the argument proves true in one case that which is patently false the lost island, it is fair to ask whether it may fairly be regarded as proving true the other case. The fact that there is no perfect island is put forth by Ganilo as showing that Anselm's argument for God's existence is flawed. Such objections are called overload objections, they do not claim to show where or how the argument goes wrong, they merely argue that, if it is unsound in one application, it is unsound in all others. Simply put, they are arguments that would overload the world with an indefinitely large number of things, like perfect islands. Criticisms <coughs> 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 Ganilo's objection to the ontological argument has been criticized on several grounds. Anselm's own reply was essentially that Ganilo had missed his point, any other being's existence is derived from God's, unnecessary in itself, and nonamenable to his ontological argument which can only ever properly apply to the single greatest being of all beings. Indeed, while we can try and conceive of a perfect island, that island is yet greater if it creates other beings, whereupon it would no longer be an island as we can understand it. Similarly, Alvin Plantinga tendered a reply to Ganilo's remonstrance by arguing that the concept of that than which nothing greater can be conceived is not applicable to an island, or any other object, in the special way that it is applicable to God. Plantinga defends Anselm's proof by averring that it applies exclusively to him. A necessary being is both existent and the greatest conceivable and greatest possible being. 
Only God, as Anselm defines him, meets all of those criteria and can, therefore, be dubbed a necessary being. Another criticism of Gonolo's argument points out that, whereas God is that thing than which no greater can be conceived, Gonolo's is that island than which no greater can be conceived. Thus, while no island may exceed it in greatness, it is perfectly reasonable to suppose that some non-island could. Consequently, wrote William L. Rowe in his summary of the polemic, if we follow Anselm's reasoning exactly, it does not appear that we can derive an absurdity from the supposition that the island than which none greater is possible does not exist. Parallels <inaudible> 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 David and Marjorie Haight took a very similar tack with Anselm's proof attempt as did Ganilo. However, whereas Ganilo changed the target noun of Anselm's proof, God, to an alternate noun that he felt was more obviously absurd, a lost island, the Heights inverted the adjective in Anselm's reasoning. Where Anselm used the word greater to define God into existence, the Heights point out that the logic can be inverted by replacing greater with worse. The statement then follows to a conclusion that the very most bad thing has to be an existent bad thing, because it would be worse for this bad thing to exist than to not exist, therefore it must exist in its absolute badness. Therefore, the devil must also exist, so long as Anselm's proof is held as consequential. Both Ganilo and the Heights arguments point out that there may be other nouns, and other bivalent adjectives that when conceived as an Anselm proof in an extreme that demands existence could also be argued to necessitate their existence as well. For example, with cold or heat, surely an absolutely cold or hot being that exists in reality is more absolutely cold or hot than one that only exists in imagination. Therefore, it must indeed exist in reality. And so on. The heights show that the word great may not be the only adjective that pushes for existence when conceived in the extreme, just as the phrase that God thing may not be the only noun interacting with great in this way, as Ganilo observed. Topic the lost island is lost forever The argument attributed to Anselm above is how the argument he presents in Chapter 2 of his Proslogion is usually interpreted. But Richard Campbell has shown that that is a serious misrepresentation. In that chapter Anselm does not say that God is that being than which no greater can be conceived. Rather, as he is praying to God, he says that we believe you to be something than which nothing greater can be conceived or thought. That belief is not a premise, it is what he is seeking to understand. Nor does his conclusion in that chapter mention God. When the text is read properly, even if his statement of belief were interpreted as a premise from which to infer that God exists, the argument would be invalid. What Anselm concludes in chapter 2 is, something than which a greater cannot be conceived as both in the understanding and in reality. That argument is but the first stage of a three-stage argument. To prove that God exists he argues in the next chapter that this same something could not be thought not to exist, and therefore, in the third stage, that this is you, Lord our God, and that therefore, you so truly exist that you could not be thought not to exist. Campbell has shown that Anselm validly argues in the second stage of his argument that this something could not be conceived not to exist from the same premises as in the first stage. So, when the amended version of Gonolos is run thought Anselm's argument it not only follows that this lost island is in reality, it could not be conceived not to exist. That might well seem even more absurd than arguing that this island lost island exists. But Anselm has a third stage of his argument. He draws his two conclusions about God in chapter 3 by arguing that whatever is other than God can be conceived not to exist. From that premise, it follows that God, and only God, exists so truly that he could not be thought not to exist. So, when Anselm's argument is understand to be the three-stage argument he actually wrote, and not how it is commonly misrepresented, amending his phrase entails that the lost island both can and cannot be conceived not to exist. Since that is a contradiction, it follows that it is not legitimate to amend Anselm's phrase. So, Anselm's response to Gonolo's parody was exactly right, given Anselm's premises, an island than which no greater island can be conceived is impossible. Topic the remainder of Gonolo's text Gonolo's treatise is divided into eight sections. The first seven of these sections are criticisms of Anselm's argument from the point of view of a rational non-believer. The last section eight, is simply praise for the remaining chapters of the proslogion. The full title of Gonolo's treatise is, What Someone in Behalf of the Fool Replies to These Arguments. This means Gonilo does not write as a fellow Christian who believes, rather, he pretends to be a rational non-believer. 
The scholarly debate has focused on section 6 the lost island refutation. Very few scholars engage with the remaining sections of Gonolo's text. Topic references Topic Citations Topic Bibliography Anselm, Encyclopædia Britannica, 9th ed., Vol. 2, New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, 1878, p. 91–93. Campbell, Richard, From Belief to Understanding, A Study of Anselm's Argument on the Existence of God The Australian National University, 1976 reissued through Edwin Mellon Press, 1978. Campbell, Richard, Rethining Anselm's Arguments, A Vindication of His Proof of the Existence of God Brill, 3018. Feinberg, Joel, Schaefer-Landau, Russ, Reason and Responsibility, Readings in Some Basic Problems of Philosophy, 13th edition, Thomson Wadsworth, 2008. Haight, Frederick David, Haight, Marjorie A., The Scandal of Reason, or Shadow of God, University Press of America, March 15, 2004, ISBN 978-0761827252. Ambrizovic, Miroslav, Gonolo's Cogito Argument in the St. Anselm Journal, Vol. 5, No. 1, 2007. Losancy, Thomas, Anselm's Response to Gonolo's Dilemma. An Insight into the Notion of Being Operative in the Proslogion in the New Scholasticism, Vol. 56, No. 207, 1982, p. 207-216. Losancy, Thomas, The anselm Ganilo Dispute About Man's Knowledge of God's Existence, An Examination in 25 Years of Anselm Studies 1969-1994, Review and Critique of Recent Scholarly Views, ed. Frederick Van Fletteren and Joseph C. Schnaubelt, Lampeda, The Edwin Mellon Press, 1996, pp. 161-181.